Hey friends, it's Jen. Welcome to the Sunshine Farm. Today is a very important day. It is planting day, and I wanna share with you guys some three really important tips to follow when planting your seedlings in your garden. with me today. Do you want to introduce yourself, Malachi? Malachi is going to be my little right-hand companion out in the garden along with my husband, Chris, who's going to help me get planting. But we're going to go outside, we're going to get in the garden, and we're going to get planting while we talk about these things. Hi. You ready to plant, Malachi? <laughs> it is a warm day here on the farm. It's in the 70s, the first 70 degree day we've had in May. And the nights are finally in the mid 40s, which gets me to my first very important point when it comes to planting out your garden. You really wanna wait until it's warm, 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 warmer than you think. The soil is nice and warm to get your heat loving crops in the ground. I'm talking about peppers, eggplants, tomatoes, anything that's like a tropical annual that likes to grow in warm climates, you want to wait. You wanna wait past the time where you're not worried about frost at all, but even further than that, you wanna wait until the nights are ideally in the 50s and the days are well into the high 60s and 70s. Because if you don't wait until then, your plants are gonna grow slow, they're gonna be stunted, and they're not gonna be happy. So definitely wait. I'm not even planting my peppers or eggplants until late May. <laughs> what are you doing? So today I'm just planting my tomatoes because I like to follow the rule of thumb where I plant my tomatoes when the nights are in the mid to high 40s. And then when the nights are in the mid to high 50s is when I like to pl plant out my peppers and my eggplants because they like heat even more than tomatoes and they really won't do well unless the, the nights are in the 50s. You're welcome to learn by doing and try to plant them when the nights are in the 40s, but you're gonna notice they're going to do a lot better if you let them grow a little bit bigger in their starter pots and plant them out in the ground once you get into the 50s. Another option is to use grow bags. So you can plant your peppers out in grow bags and then bring them inside if the nights are below below 50. That way you can get them planted if that's your, your goal. Chris is over there filling up our gorilla cart so we can get some compost out to the berms and swales so I can get planting in that part of the garden. And as the light startled our eyes, we let go of disguise. And now there's something in the air and a sparkly shimmer on our skin. Hey friends, we are over here in my main tomato bed. I'm gonna go ahead and plant a tomato and show you how I plant my tomatoes in the ground and tell you about my second must follow tip for planting your plants out in the garden. So for my tomatoes, I dig a nice deep, deep hole, deeper than you would think. Deep, 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 because Oh, there's a little potato growing. With tomatoes, you can actually bury them all the way up the stem. So I'm gonna plant my tomato all the way up to that first leaf. And they'll actually grow roots all along the stem. It's unique with tomatoes though, so don't go ahead and plant anything else deep in the stem like that. So I wanna make sure the hole is nice and deep. Okay, so I have my hole nice and deep and we're gonna bring all the way there. Now that my tomato is planted, this brings me to my second really important tip when you're planting anything in the ground, whether it's seeds, starts, 
anything, you really wanna make sure you do this and water it in. One thing that's really common anytime you put transplants out in your garden is something called transplant shock. And this is because the roots aren't used to the soil that you're putting them in. They're not used to the texture, the quality, the nutrients. One way you can decrease the transplant shock and that you can increase the ability of your plants to adjust to the new soil is to give them a nice good drink of water. So water them in and that way their roots will start to spread out, absorb all that water and get used to their new home in the ground or in your raised bed or in your pot, wherever you're moving them to. Wherever it is, make sure you water them in. Now, one thing you might notice, if you have not hardened your plants off enough, and that means bringing your seedlings outside to get them used to the outside sunlight and conditions before planting them in the ground, you might notice they have a harder time adjusting to being in the ground. They might have some really severe transplant shock. They may be sun scalded, which is like the, the leaves getting burned from the sun because they're not used to it. They might be completely wilted and look really sad. If this is the case, all hope is not lost. You may just need to give them an extra drink, take care of them, watch them, make sure they have plenty of water, and uh, hopefully they'll adjust well. But you can avoid this in the future by giving your plants a long period of hardening off. Here with me and my tomatoes, I've been hardening them off for about two weeks, bringing them outside every day, a little bit more each day, to the point where the past two days, they've been out for a full 48 hours, and with the weather looking good, no crazy winds, no crazy rain, um, and no crazy heat, it's the perfect time to get them in the ground. So all these tomatoes went in the ground today, just a couple hours ago. And as you can see, there's really no signs of transplant shock. I gave them a good drink of water and they've all been hardened off well. So they're looking really good and I didn't have to deal with any rough adjustments to their new soil. So we've talked about tip number one, waiting till the nights are plenty warm to get your heat loving crops in the ground. We've talked about tip number two, giving all of your plants a good drink of water once they're in the ground. Tip number three is also really important and a little bit more complicated than the others. And that is spacing. Making sure you space your plants far enough apart that they get plenty of nutrients from the soil and some good airflow, but also not spacing them too far apart to where you end up with more weeds and some difficult time with managing them. Now here in our garden, we don't deal with a whole lot of weed pressure because we use no-till methods, which decrease our amount of weeds substantially. I can make a video about that another time. Another added benefit of no-till is that our soil is nice and rich because of all of that organic matter, so we can get away with planting things closer together. We also live in upstate New York where we don't have crazy rampant tomato disease or things like blight early on in the season. I don't have to worry about airflow quite as much as, as if you're down in the south. However, some things, pretty much wherever you are, can be put, spaced closer together. Some things need to be further apart. So when you're planting out in the ground, you want to know some general rules so you don't end up overcrowding your plants or with tons of space and you don't know what to do with it. So things like beans can be really close together. like a few inches apart and they're pretty healthy, they're pretty happy, they don't take up tons of nutrients and they're actually nitrogen fixers which means they're going to help improve the quality of your soil by just being there. However, things like tomatoes, they really need to be spaced further apart. Minimum is a foot apart and that's if you're doing crazy consistent pruning and you live in an area where disease is not rampant. I plant my tomatoes 18 inches apart on center because we have really, really nutrient rich soil and we don't have crazy disease. So that's really worked for me. However, if you're in an area where diseases like blight are more common early on in the season and you're not gonna, going to be able to maintain them and prune them regularly, I would go ahead and go more like two feet apart. If you do want to plant them closer together, like I do, you do wanna make sure that you follow pruning to a single stem, which means that you're gonna prune off all those suckers and only allow one single stem to grow up. That way you create plenty of spacing and end up with lots of airflow. Basil. Basil is another thing that you can plant very close together. It grows super well and super happy with the support of other little basil plants right next to it.
Right, Basil? <laughs> Now, if you have questions about pruning tomatoes to a single stem, that's something I can make another video on, or you can search the many resources online about pruning tomatoes to a single stem. But basically, you're gonna be looking for removing those suckers so that you can maximize airflow and plant your tomatoes closer together. Now, every plant is a little different when it comes to spacing. So it might be a good idea to sit down and write out spacing for each plant that you're planning to put in your garden. I have a square foot gardening guide if you're interested in plant spacing that gives you a good idea of the maximum amount of crops you can put in a garden when it's fed lots of nutrients and you're doing some regular maintenance like tomato pruning for example. The square foot gardening method is a great way to maximize space in a small garden or in a big garden where you're just trying to use every inch of your garden space. As you can see behind me, those fava beans are really close together. Those brassicas, AKA the broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and cauliflower are not because those things get big and bushy and need a lot of nutrients and a lot of room. The fava beans will more likely grow tall and up, so they don't need quite as much room or nutrients from the soil. So there you have it. Those are the three must know tips when you're planting. You need to make sure that you wait until the soil is nice and warm to plant those heat loving crops. 45 degrees at night for your tomatoes, 50 degrees and above for peppers and eggplants. You want to water all of your plants in, whether you planted a seed or you plant a seedling into the ground. Make sure it has a nice drink before leaving them. And then you want to make sure you know your spacing when you plant out your garden. You want to be prepared to, to know how, how much space you want to give each crop. Now a note about all three of these things, you will learn as you go. If this is your first time planting a garden or your second time or your third, you're going to learn these lessons along the way. So all of these three things I've learned through failing to do them correctly. Now I know I'm gonna do better and I'll continue to do better in the years to come. That's all for now, my friends. Basil and I, we say goodbye and happy planting. I hope you enjoy getting all your seedlings and seeds in the ground. It's a wonderful time of year and I can't wait to see how your gardens grow. Bye guys.